Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, what I present to you today is a game that's kind of weird. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, what I have for you today is a preposterous awesomeness of everything. A game by Joe Richardson, who previously worked on some weird games, like this one at Game Jolt. And I also think he did another game, about, like, it always raining or something like that. But I can't really remember what it was called. But nevertheless, all those games were freeware. So what we got going on here is this gentleman's very first commercial forelay. It's a visionaire powered. No voice acting, point and click adventure game that's not particularly long, folks. So let's get started. Now you know you're going to be in for something different when there's a cat pop up button on the menu screen. So the game opens, giving us a first person perspective. Then we get a good look at our hero, who is in the buff, and I'm pretty sure is the creator of the game, Joe Richardson. Just here, naked, that's the day he was born. Now I'm sure you got a million different questions. Who are we? Or why are we naked? What is this place? Well, we're not going to find any answers here. Instead we have to go to the overmap screen and go to the only available location. And hopefully, maybe we'll discover some plot. Or perhaps even, some pants. Yeah, I can safely say there's not a whole lot going on here. We can talk to this big-headed gentleman in the background, and, well, we don't really learn much of anything. And then we can go over here to this lady, and, well, we won't talk to her. Because it turns out our hero is desperately in love with her. So in love that he can't talk to her. Okay. In case you didn't read the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that there's a bunch of really weird options here. Now there's your typical examine, talk, pick up, use sort of things, and then there's disrespect, and do a backflip, pray for, consume, and befuddle. Believe it or not, some of these are actually pretty important, others, not so much. But hey, they're here, you can click on them, and it really drives home the fact that this is a very peculiar game. So we pass by a guy who's eating some raw venison, just there, barehandedly. I guess he's the macho man, and run across some random items laying on the ground. Now I still have no idea, why the hell are these people here? Why are they behaving this way? Are they like survivors from some plane crash? Were they born here? Is this just some bizarre fever dream that was turned into a point and click adventure game? I just don't know. I think some of these people on this screen are famous people. Like I think one of them is PewDiePie, but I'm not really sure. Are these other YouTubers? Are these just celebrities? To be perfectly honest with you guys, I'm not really cued in on all this celebrity stuff, so I won't go ahead and say these are probably celebrities, and they're naked, playing in a scrap pile. Well, you can tell one man made this game without any worries about marketing it. So I picked up a bunch of crap from the ground and made my way to the only other location I could go to. And also, I dressed up this guy to look like a construction worker. Well, really, he looks more like a stripper trying to pose as a construction worker. Hey, that could be sexy for some people. Anywho, do we talk to this mustachioed gentleman over here, who's clearly the cream of this island's crop, considering he has underwear on, which means he's literate. So we give this gentleman some books, and I assume what is a ukulele starts playing in the background. And yes indeed, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, this is this game's version of a cutscene. It has a little film reel up top, and more text to read. Basically, these books contain plans to build a rocket ship. Which means our hero's goal in life now is to build a rocket ship. Okay, we finally have a quest, but I still have no idea why the hell these people are here. So our hero makes it over to the group of maybe or maybe not celebrities and tells them, hey, I want to build a rocket. But unfortunately for our hero, it's no dice. Because he just does not look the part. Even though he has the official looking outfit on, people can still tell he's the game's creator. So what we're going to want to do instead is befuddle this guy over here with the big head, and then dress him up to look the part of the authority figure. And while our hero, like Serrano de Bergiac, puts words in this guy's ear. Thank you. 
Now, believe it or not, this game has multiple game overs. Like this one right here, where a hero goes all atrocities on his fellow comrades, being complete dicks to people and tasing some naked lady. But hey, it gets the rocket ship built. Except wait, it doesn't. Eventually our hero is disposed of and well, it's game over. And that magnificent naked man will never ride a rocket ship. So obviously we have to go with the other option. Hey everyone, let's work together. And sure enough, some stuff happens. Yeah, our hero just got knocked out by a naked man with a big head. Hmm. So after an undefined period of time passes, our hero wakes up, fully clothed. And oh look, it's a guy who was wearing the underwear. He's now wearing what looks to be like pajamas. And he informs our dubious hero of what's going on. So in short, the group decided to hold elections for the project leader of the Building the Rocket Ship project. Two guys who looked exactly alike ran. One of the guys won. The other guy started a campaign against him. And then he won next time there was an election. And this kept going on and on and on. With the two guys looking exactly the same, just swapping roles. Now I don't know if this game is some sort of political allegory. Trying to make the statement that when you only have two parties, one party is indistinguishable from the other. But it could also just be that our dear creator here didn't want to make two separate character models and just stumbled his way into political allegory. Well hopefully you read that. Because of the political squabbling of the two identical twins, nothing's happening to the rocket. And now that our hero is conscious, he obviously has to remedy this situation. So he decides to make the smart guy in the pajamas run for project manager, which means we gotta do some politicking. So armed with some jam for bribes and a sense of moral obligation, our hero goes down the map and into the brave new world that's occurred over the period of time he was blacked out. Either these guys work very fast or our hero was out for a very long time. <laughs> Yeah, you'll notice right off the bat that our nudie island is no longer nudie. Everyone has clothes all of a sudden. Maybe this is symbolic of the shame that technological progress brings upon people. Or maybe the creator was just worried about those center bars constantly being on. So like just about every single adventure game, I had no idea what the hell I was supposed to do. So I talked with everyone and interacted with everything. And you know what happened among those interactions? I discovered a goddamn computer. My goodness, this is anachronism island. So this computer screen has some multiple options that ultimately don't matter at all. The first one being become a blogger and try to blog about the project manager. And nobody reads our hero's blog because, well, there's only one computer. And I also think it's symbolic for how many blo- Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm reading a little bit too much into this game. But nevertheless, it causes our hero to die. Because, you know, he's just blogging all day and not being a productive member of society. Shame. Shame, shame, shame. So as for the other option, our hero can create a video game about the current political situation. Now to say the least, this seems rather autobiographical to me. I mean, the guy talks about his lack of experience, his inability to code, just how complicated and difficult it is to make a game, and how maybe even the writing's a bit subpar and the jokes wouldn't be funny, and you know, all the typical struggles that a creator goes through. And then it ends with someone making fun of all of his efforts. Huh, I don't know why people would want to do that. But alright, enough of just lollygagging and watching, well, this video that's on the computer. What we have to do here is get Pajama Pants Old Guy elected to project manager. So first things first, we talk to the current project manager about getting our homeboy into the election cycle. He says we have to fill out the right form, which leads to some Brazil-esque bureaucratic dialogue trees that just go on and on about not having the right forms. So obviously, we're going to have to find the right forms. And sure enough, the rebels who are hanging out on the beach, still naked as the day they were born, can give us the right form. Well, it looks like we got a regular old straw man revolution going on here. Anyway, we have a fresh brand new goal now, and that's to get signatures for this piece of paper that the revolutionaries gave to us. Now, for the most part, it's incredibly easy. You talk to everyone and you say, yo, sign my paper, and they're like, okay. The only tricky bit is this PewDiePie news reporter. He won't sign our document until we get some TMZ-style pictures for his newspaper. And sure enough, it's as easy as giving jam to a lady. <laughs> So 
So now that we have enough signatures, we can hand over our petition to the project manager, and then we can run for project manager of building the rocket ship. I know that's what this game's about, folks. But hey, we still can't quite win the election yet. Because first of all, we have to get a celebrity endorsement, which is pretty simple. We just talked to the ladies who Tata's we took a picture of, and she's like, yeah, I'll do it. But the other bits are a bit tricky. You see, what we gotta do is we gotta stop PewDiePie from writing ugly little things about our candidate in the school paper or whatever this thing is. So to do that, we have to go ahead and free the feral PewDiePie. I kid you not, folks, I kid you not. So we talk to Mr. Fancy Pajama Pants Man and he gives us a key, which in turn we load into a model rocket that's hanging out right behind him. Then we shoot off the model rocket into the sky. All this will eventually make sense, folks. You needn't worry. So now all we gotta do is walk past the revolutionaries and go through a cave using the torch that we made out of stuff we just found lying around. And then once we pass through the cave, we enter a brave, bold new world that features the game's only black person. And to say the least, probably best you just read it. Yeah, I don't think that's fine, game. I don't think that's fine. I'm not saying this game's racist. I'm just saying that may not be in the best of taste to have your only black character talk like that. Just saying, game, it can be interpreted in the wrong way rather easily. But anywho, we're here to kill PewDiePie with PewDiePie. So all we gotta do now is walk past some guard who's just hanging out here and go pick up our model rocket that we shot off that has a key in it. Now you see the reason why we had to stuff the key into the model rocket is that our security guard guy won't let us buy with the key in our inventory. Easy peasy folks. Now that we have the key, it's a simple matter of freeing PewDiePie. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I did spoil a little bit when I said PewDiePie killed PewDiePie, but I don't think you expected it to be this vicious now, did you? Hell of a game, folks. So now that we've murdered the only member of the free press, we can now cruise to victory in this election. All we gotta do is just tell the people what they want to hear, and then they in turn will vote for Mustachio Pajama Man. Yeah, our hero got knocked out again. But hey, at least our guy got elected to be the project leader of building the rocket ship. Because that's what this game's about. Building a rocket ship to go into space because, well, you can build a rocket ship. And there, yeah, there's an allegory for politics or something. Maybe just culture in general. I mean, I don't know. There's no voice acting. I don't want to read everything. <laughs> wow, we're in space now and we're tied up in a cage. Yeah, it turns out the dude who we helped get elected to project manager was the villain. Yeah, he's gonna fly this rocket ship into the sun and kill every single one aboard. You wanna know why? Well, just read for yourself, folks. <laughs> Well, this game has some environmentalism in it. Yeah, this guy's gonna kill all the humans on the island because the humans were destroying the island. Yeah, humans are pretty crappy for that. So hey, at least that's a perfectly legitimate reason for wanting to murder everyone. But naturally, we don't want to die. So we're gonna try to figure out a way to stop him. And it's relatively simple. We can get up and walk around. Yeah. And it seems like he didn't really think this cage thing through. And credit where credit is due, I do like how the UI changes now that we're in space. It's all sci-fi and stuff. That's a pretty nifty little touch that was completely unnecessary but appreciated. So now we just walk around the ship and we find one of those claw hand things and we use it to take the key down and then we unlock ourselves from the cage. Again, it's not very hard. The claw is just lying around the plane. It's tiny. Now all we gotta do is knock out this guy so we can take control of the spaceship.
You heard our hero. We gotta speak to the majority of people who are held up in the back and ask them, where do they want to go? Do they want to go to the moon? A planet that we can walk around on. Do we want to go to Mars? A planet that, yeah, we can walk around on. Or, hey, how about Jupiter? A planet that I couldn't walk around on. So, yeah, we can go to all these exotic locations, but at the end of the day, I think our hero says it best. So the only thing we can do to progress further on in the game is go back home. Well, alright, let's do that. Now, I'm not sure if what you're listening is what the composer intended you to hear, because it sounds almost like I got two tracks playing at the same time. Or maybe that's what the composer was doing. I don't know, it just sounds a little weird to me. But then again, this whole game has been downright bizarre. Yeah, that's totally not what would happen to a person who fell from space onto water. They wouldn't go splash. They would go skid, red mist, a million little pieces. Well, it looks like we got a case of deja vu, or the game's just looping back. Yeah, the game's looping back. We are back at the very beginning, naked, on the beach, and we're gonna do exactly what we did to begin with. Wander to the little clearing, talk to people, rinse and repeat, we are doing a groundhog day. Now, we could go ahead and talk to the mustachioed guy and be like, hey, I've done all this before, and the game's like, yeah, yeah, you're a clever one, you figured it out. Well, let me get all philosophical on you now. And then the game quits out. Always funny when the entertainment you're playing is like, oh, you should go seize the day, climb a mountain, do something else besides play me. But hey, that's it, folks. That is it for this bizarre little title. My god, was that game weird, and no, I don't mean that as an insult. I just mean that as a statement of fact. That was a strange, bizarre game made by one man, and my god, he had a weird vision for a game, and he did it. Now, for the most part, this game is just strange. It's odd. It's bizarre. It looks weird. The story is weird. Nothing's really explained, and I guess it's kind of a comedy, but humor subjective. I didn't find it to be terribly funny. I just found it to be more what the fuck am I doing sort of game. But I will say it's a nice curiosity, and if you got the money or you see this game on a decent sale, or even in a bundle, it is definitely worth picking up if you just want something different and odd. Other than that, I think you can give this game a pass. I mean, it took me only one hour to beat it, and the puzzle are just really really easy and yes i am aware there is another ending where you can play through the game again and get kind of like a happy ending but i didn't bother i was pretty much done with this game by the time it just quit out on me not to say i regret my experience with it it was a bizarre joy and a privilege in a way to step into a mind of john robinson he sees the world very differently than i do all right folks have a good morning a good afternoon or a good evening